Welcome back to Friday Night Blitz. It's now time for our fan cam to see which student sections were rocking the most tonight. So let's see if we can uh, get that up. That's where I was. That's Des Moines East letting off balloons in honor of a teammate that they lost in 2019. Really cool homage to them. And on the other side, there's Lincoln. Both teams rocking a blackout. I don't think they communicated. <laughs> I like the camo pants there. It looks like this is from Des Moines Christian. I think it's a Western night, would you say? Yeah, I'd night? say so. There's an American night. That's from Pella. Oh, no, this is from, uh, this was the Winterset student section over at Van oh. Meter. Yeah, it, I think Patriot night, USA night. I'm safe to pretty say. sure Pella was an American night, too. That looks like Cyhawk. Yeah. Iowa stuff, some Iowa State gear. Looks like 50-50. There's some blue, maybe some Drake fans. <laughs> oh wait, that's Van Meter. That's right. Got it. All right. It's also it was also youth football night there. Youth so football night. All the little Man, guys out there. They gotta condense those themes. <laughs> we go yep, back, we're to, back east. to where we started. And it looks like we're going down to Norwalk. And whenever Lewis Central visits town, it's an instant classic. And we join the game in the second quarter. Titans ahead by 14. Lewis Central inches their way downfield. Then Jonathan Humpall takes the handoff from Braylon Camrad. Finally getting the ball in. That makes it 21-0. But the Warriors get on the board. I mean, Norwalk's had a good season. Dominic Tinger passing to Dylan Rank in the end zone. Caught. Norwalk gets their first TD, 21-7. Now Lewis Central playing it safe, going conservative. Again, making their way back downfield. And here's Camrad. He finds his way through the middle. Touchdown. Titans score another seven points. And Norwalk has a strong response. Landell Hoshteen nearly losing the ball, trying to fake out some Titans. Here we go. He almost loses it, but gets it. And wow, that's like a Brock Purdy play. Throws to the end zone, and it's caught, but it's not enough. Lewis Central wins this one 49-27. Those defending champs look real good. Well, let's head to this big game between Urbandale and Valley. We gave you a little spoiler alert on how it ended earlier. Urbandale's Peyton Rottenhouse. Uh, gonna find Cole Garwood here, and he's gonna haul that in and take it for a nice 20 yard gain. But Valley's uh, Tristan Irvin and Jack Funk gonna get the sack here of Rottenhouse, um, and that's gonna be a fourth down. Some good defense there, but Valley's quarterback Michael Provenza will take this one 15 yards himself for the touchdown down but Urbandale getting the big win over Valley in overtime 10 to 7. Man what a I can't believe that. Ankeny Centennial taking on Waukee proper. Elijah Porter in the first half scores his first of two touchdowns in the end zone there. Let's see if we go back to Porter or are we going to go watch what Waukee does as you can see 7-0 Jags. Yep we go back to Porter and he Punches in another two touchdowns there for the running back, 14-0, Ankeny Centennial. But now Waukee's Tate Garrington goes up and gets the interception. What a catch there for Waukee. They go and they score a field goal right here. It's good. That's a long field goal, too. I don't know how long it is. But Ankeny Centennial, they get the win. 31 to 6 over Waukee. All right, we're going to head to break, but don't go anywhere because up next we head to Des Moines Christian as they play host to ACGC.